As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Hi everyone, I'm Audrey and welcome to my YouTube channel, Profess and Protest. If you are new here today, uh, I have a lot of our videos, you can check them out. And if you like what you see, please subscribe or leave a comment and let me know what you think. So today I really wanted to discuss the origins of the painting, the you know famous portrait we know as Jesus Christ. Have you ever wondered how the well-known portrait of him came about? Have you ever wondered why the picture he's depicted in doesn't match what he is described to be biblically speaking, and actually is ordered against not making images of anything in heaven, that including our Savior. The true history behind the painting is startling to say the least. Through my research, I've collected an abundant amount of information regarding its origins. First, when we look into Yahweh's word to see what he has to say about Jesus and his appearance, we get pretty much vague detail. First, we know he was a Hebrew, that's first and foremost. We also know he blended in with all the Jews of that day in John chapter 8, verse 59, and it reads, Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Right there, we learn Jesus was able to blend in. Knowing that, he definitely was not the, you know, he wasn't white with a long golden brown straight hair and blue eyes, as, as we know popularly depicted. Also, we know that the Bible has to say about it in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame to him? So long hair, that would have meant that Yeshua would have gone against Yahweh's word, which we know he was without transgressions. He did not sin. So Hebrews also had brown eyes and not blue. So right there, you see, it's, it's not possible that Jesus could have had long hair because if God condemns it and Jesus is the word of God, he's the living word of God, he would have not have done that and he never would have had long hair. And that goes for even the, you know, the black paintings of Jesus with the long dreadlocks, even how it was long hair. There's no long hair, white, black, purple, you know, yellow, it doesn't matter the color. It's, it's the fact that there's these images out there that are being pushed to be our Lord and our savior and to represent him. But it's condemned in the Bible to even have long hair. So that's just something I'm just trying to bring to your awareness. And, you know, I always like to look to the word of God to see what he has to say about stuff because his word is truth. So he also was said to have no beauty or majesty. And that was in Isaiah chapter 53, verse two. So lastly, we know the second commandment out of the Father's 10 says in Exodus chapter 20, verses four through six. Thou shalt not make unto these any graven image or any likeliness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. And so on. Right here, we can conclude Jesus would not have allowed anyone to make an image of him to worship. And the people in his day knew this and they understood this. That's why it wasn't until hundreds of years later after Jesus went back to heaven to sit at the right hand of God that there would come about these images of him, claiming to be him. The most prevalent portrait of our day is the one point, or painted by Leonardo da Vinci in 1503. So Caesar Bulgaria was the one who actually employed Leonardo as a military architect and engineer, in which they were said to have been intimate and lovers. To express his love for Caesar, Leonardo da Vinci painted many pictures of him. Caesar's father, who was Rodrigo Bulgaria, who became later known as Pope Alexander IV, had his son's picture put up as Jesus Christ under the authority of the Catholic Church elite. They did this to declare to the world, or to, to deceive the world into thinking Jesus looked like this. We gotta ask why. You know, what? why would they do this? And that's a really big question, and obviously, you know, it goes against the Bible. The picture itself is just, you know, it's blasphemous, but you just, you got to ask yourself, why, what, what would be the point of this? Maybe, you know, to exalt one race above another. You know, some speculate that, and that's why, you know, they think like it's a race war about, you know, Jesus could be white, Asian, black, whatever color. And at the end of the day, as we all know, it doesn't matter about the color, but it does matter why they're putting out, you know, images that aren't accurately, historically, or biblically correct of Jesus. You know, maybe they did this in hopes 
of, you know, in the future to prepare the world for what maybe the Antichrist will look like. That's just a thought. That's not for sure. That's just maybe something I'm speculating on. You know, thus being people being brainwashed. Maybe they might accept the Antichrist because they would believe it to be Jesus. Right now, there's actually somebody in Russia that I came across YouTube a while ago, and he looks exactly like the portrait painting that, you know, the Catholic Church uses for Jesus, the long golden brown hair, blondish brown hair, blue eyes, and then the type of beard he has. And he looks just like this image. And he's in Russia, and he has a whole village, and um, they follow him, and they listen to everything he says. And he's claiming right now to be the Yeshua the Lord and Savior of the world. And biblically, if you read, you know that that's that's not Jesus. Not, let's forget about the looks, but just everything that's not Jesus. He tells people if they don't listen to him, he's gonna send diseases on them and the women are scared. And I'm gonna leave the link, you guys have to see this. I'll do in our video about that in our time. But that's just right there. I'm just trying to show you guys how that this guy looks exactly like the same person in the portrait and many Russian people who are good people, but super deceived are following him and really believe he's forgiving them of their sins and they're worshiping him. And right there, that's idolatry and false god worship, and it's really bad. And he looks just like the painting, and that's why the Russians, these people, a sect, you know, group, um, they believe that he is Jesus because it's undeniable because he looks exactly like the portrait. Again, like I said, it's just, it's weird, and stuff like this really does happen. There's a nar guy in Australia who claims to be Jesus reincarnated, and he has memories, and he's divorced, and, he has two kids and he found out like 45 he had vision and it took him a year to accept the fact that he is in fact reincarnation of jesus christ and he said that his wife is mary magdalene the um the whore of the bible they, they actually end up getting married and and she says she's the reincarnation There's so much deceit going out into the world guys it's just it's crazy but you know like i was saying getting back to the point for a subject um Either way, the painting is very deceptive, and it's a form of spiritual fornication that has crept in the body of Christ. We most, we must be aware and wise as a serpent, and you know, as the Bible says, so we may not be deceived when the time comes. Actually, one of the 14 books removed from our Bible back in 1611 by the Vatican were called the Apocrypho, Apocrypho a um, book. Sorry, guys. I know I'm not pronouncing that right. Um, it's a mispronunciation on my part. Leave it below if you can pronounce it better because I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. And I'll probably fix it after. But moving on, there was 14 books in that. And it was all removed, like I'm saying, in 1611 by the Vatican because I guess it, they're saying it wasn't credible enough uh, sources of books. And if we dig into it, there's one of the books in there called Wisdom of Solomon. And actually... Through this chapter wisdom solomon it it paints a picture and forewarns us that there will be a time of a false image of jesus is going to come up and people are going to worship it and commit uh spiritual fornication and idolatry and this is one of the books the vatican declared not to be uh like said credible and it really makes no sense because this actually really forewarns thousands of years before this happens you know the picture of Jesus. So I'm just going to read it and let you guys see what you think. See if you get the same thing out of it. But so Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 8, and it says, But that which is made with the hands is cursed, as well it as he that made it. He because he made it, and it because being corruptible, it was called God. And this it clearly is warning of a false image of God by corrupt people. And if the people who made this image and promote it was a Vatican way back when and still promoting it, it's showing that there's corruption in the Vatican. And that's something that they're trying to hide clearly. And that's a good reason they would take this out. So if you see the connection within that, then you know you, you can conclude and concur your own feeling about it. And like I said, I'll leave everything down there so you can see it yourself. But it's just ironic how it warns against false images and the ones who perpetuated it. And they're saying that those are the ones who are committing spiritual adultery. This is this is adultery. But moving on to the next verse, 9 10 it states, For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike helpful, hateful unto God. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. The Vatican, seeing how this were warned about them, they decide to hide it by saying this book isn't credible. Again, in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12, it reads, For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, that corruption of life. Again, as we keep reading, even more is revealed in the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 15 now. And it says, For a father afflicted with ultimately mourning, 
when he hath made an image of his child, soon taken away, now honored him as God, and which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him in ceremonies and sacrifices. Right here, guys, you see how this is clearly warning of a father, aka Rodrigo Bulgaria, who used his son's image to be used as Christ. It, it literally, it spells it out, it says exactly what they're probably trying to hide. That's how I feel about it. They're probably really trying to hide this because to have something that warns so perfectly against something, you can really read it and you see it for yourself that this is really talking about the false image of Jesus that is everywhere, you know? And so the next verse ties this conclusion together, just to kind of tie this all up in which it reads in chapter 14, verse 16. Thus is the process of him of time and in godly custom grown strong was kept as a law and graven images were worshiped by the commandments of kings and again who are these kings who commanded graven images to be worshiped you just you you really gotta stop think and i guess biggest thing research and pray pray about it you know that's why i do really a lot of my research i'll pray on it and see where god leads me and again, like I said, this points right back to the Vatican. That's why they took these books out, because it exposes them. That's my personal belief of that. I mean, you guys should check it out. But it it's very clearly exposes the whole ordeal with the fact that the image is, you know, it's corrupted. It's, it's bad. And like I said, it's committing adultery. As we know, there has been undeniable corruption corruption, you know, amongst the Catholic Church throughout history. And you know, you guys know I love my brothers and sisters in Christ, regardless of any kind of Christian denomination. Truthfully, me, I personally don't believe in labeling myself with any certain denomination. I think it's all important the fact that we all love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and want to serve Him and keep His commandments. But it's also, it's good to ring, in, ring a bell if people are getting deceived into worshiping idols or doing something that could lead them astray. It's out of love, not anything you know, bad, but you know, it's definitely, you gotta be careful with committing idolatry and worshiping graven images, especially seeing that it's not really the image that it's believed to be. You know, it's not fall into idolatry. You know, it's help each other with the bride of Christ. We should, when we see warnings, we should bring them out. And, you know, I get that not everybody will agree with us, but like I said, it's just how I see, especially if you do your own research, you can really see that Caesar Bulgaria and the painting now of our savior, or supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be Jesus Christ, first looks biblically nothing accurate to Caesar Bulgaria and the picture of Jesus Christ that they're saying is, they look so much alike. They have the same jawline, the same head shape, uh, the, the longer hair, the same kind of beard. Um, it's, it's very much, it, it's, it's too ironic to ignore. That's all I'm saying. And at the end of the day, Jesus, like I said, he could be yellow or purple. His color isn't my main focus in this, guys. I don't want you guys to get me wrong. This has nothing to do with color. It, it's the fact, like I said, it's the deceitful images of him that are important, that we should talk about, that we should not fall into and believe that these are really his images. As we know, if it contradicts God's word, it is not of him. And again, the long hair, guys, you know, that's to God. God condemns that. He finds it an abomination. He condemns that. So right there, you know he can't have long hair. So I'll just, I'll leave all the links below. I highly suggest you do some of your own independent research as well so you can get your own conclusion. Kind of see for yourselves if you're not aware of all the stuff. But until next time, guys, may Yahweh bless you all.